Hello there, Geographers, and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today, we are going to be breaking down reference maps and thematic maps. Reference maps are informational maps. These maps show boundaries, the toponym, and geographic features of a place. There are a variety of different reference maps that we use every day. Political maps show political boundaries, such as national and regional borders. These maps provide information about the organization of territories and their government. Physical maps show the natural features of the Earth's surface, such as mountains, rivers, lakes, deserts, and coastlines. These maps provide information on the physical geography and the topography of a region. Speaking of the topography, there are also topographic maps. These maps use contour lines to display the terrain and elevation changes in an area. The closer the lines are together, the steeper the terrain is. While the more space there is between the lines, the less the elevation is changing. The next type is road maps, which help people get from place A to place B and show the different road networks, highways, streets, and transportation routes in a geographic area. And all of these are just a few examples of reference maps that we can use. Thematic maps, on the other hand, display spatial patterns of places and use quantitative data to display information on specific topics. Chloropleth maps display data by using different colors or different shades of colors, with each color or shade of color showing a different quantity of a data set, as seen here in the legend. Speaking of data, make sure to always take into account the scale that is being used to display the data. Depending on the scale, the data may be more specific or more general. For example, when looking at this small scale map of population density, we can see that India has 300 to 500 people per square kilometer. However, if we change our scale and we zoom in, we can see that India's population density varies depending on what part of the state you are looking at. So we can see that while chloropleth maps are very visual, they can also sometimes simplify information too much, which could give us a distorted perspective all of which can be due to the scale of the map or simply due to the shading of the map. The next thematic map we have is a dot density map, which shows data by placing points on a map where the data is occurring, allowing the reader to see the spatial distribution of the data. Generally, there are two types of dot density maps, a one-to-one -one dot density map, where each dot represents one object, item, or person, and a one-to-many dot density map, where one dot represents multiple objects, items, or people. Now, sometimes the cartographer may not locate the dots exactly where the data is occurring in order to create a more visual map. Or sometimes if there's a high concentration of the variable being displayed on the map in one location, we may not be able to discern the different dots. So it's always important to pay close attention when looking at these maps. Just remember when looking at a dot density map to always read the legend before making any inferences about the data. Another type of map we can observe is a graduated symbol map, which uses symbols of varying size or color to represent data associated with specific locations or regions. These maps can be very visual maps, but sometimes can become confusing due to overlapping information. Next, we have isoline maps, which connect different geographic areas that have similar or equal amounts of data by using lines. The lines on the map are called isolines or contours. Each isoline represents a constant value or level of the mapped variable. For instance, weather maps show areas with similar temperature. It is essential that readers pay close attention to the legend when looking at any of these maps and that cartographers think about the map's readability and clarity when creating the map. Then there are flow line maps, which show the movement of different goods, people, animals, services, or ideas between different geographic locations. For instance, in a migration flow map, the lines often represent the movement of people between different regions or countries, with wider lines indicating larger migration volumes. Or in a trade flow map, the lines depict the movement of goods between ports or trade routes, with thicker lines indicating higher trade volume. The last map we are going to look at today is a cartogram map, which shows data in a dynamic way, with the greatest value represented by the largest area and the smallest value represented by the smallest area. We can see that the size or shape of a region or place is altered according to the specific variable being mapped. For instance, displaying the population of countries around the world. Here we can see that China and India have a larger population compared to Brazil and Canada. Cartograms are excellent at illustrating data in a unique and visual way, but can be difficult for some people to read as they heavily distort the geographic areas that they are displaying. 
Well, there you have it. Those are just a few of the different types of maps that you need to know. Remember, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing. And if you're in AP Human Geography and need more help with your class or that AP National Exam, consider checking out my Ultimate Review Packet and the Mr. Sin Discord server. As always, I'm Mr. Sin, and I'll see you next time online.